Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, what you're looking at right now is a camel that has dropped dead. It dropped dead due to thirst. This camel is from a region called Cholistan in Pakistan. It's a desert that's been struck by a drought. It's excessively hot right now and the water has not come. And the animals are dropping like this all over. What you have to understand about this place, that it is a community that lives off the cattle, they live off the animals. When the animals start dying, know that the humans are going to start dying next. The way these animals are dropping on the streets, out of thirst, they're dropping dead. Humans will start dropping dead like this very, very shortly if they do not get the aid and the help with the permission of Allah. We're currently raising funds on behalf of Humanity Care Relief to set up filtration plants so that this community can get water for their animals and for themselves to drink from and to do tahara from, to do wudu and ghusla from. These children here mentioned this animal died of thirst because it had no decent water to drink. Please, I ask you to donate as generously as you can for Allah's sake the link below so we can make a change for these people's lives in the long term. And I ask you to do this quickly before you watch the video. Just pause, make that donation and then carry on watching insha'Allah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Uthman. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Barak Rafiq for joining me. Hayyakum Allah wa bayyakum. The discussion today insha'Allah ta'ala is going to be with regards to some questions that I have for you, Sheikh. With regards to your aqid, with regards to your manhaj. And the reason... I'm going to present these questions to you, Sheikh, is in line with the hadith, the guidance of the Salaf al Salih. Mm. There were many Imams from the Salaf al Salih whose aqidah was questioned. Mm. Um, some question people's aqaid due to hasad and jealousy, and some do it out of genuineness, out of genuine concern, because they want to make sure that they're in line with the Athar of Muhammad ibn Sirin, mm. where he mentioned. فَانْذُرْ عَمَّنْ تَأْخُذُونَ دِينَكُمْ Be careful who you take your religion from. So Shaykh Imam Al-Muzni, rahmanullah ta'ala, they questioned with regards to his aqidah, with regards to the Qur'an, whether he had the belief of the Mu'tazila. And he responded by authoring a book which is now studied today, Sharh al-Sunnah, in which he explained his aqidah to show that he did not have that belief. Likewise, Imam Al-Bukhari, rahmanullah ta'ala, they questioned him with regards to his Belief of regards to the Quran, accusing him of having the belief of the Mu'tazila, which mm. he is free from. But when the Imam heard this, he clarified mm. by writing the great kitab, Khalq, Khalq wa Af'al al Ibad. And they were following the guidance of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who, when he was walking once with his wife, Safiya bint Huyay, mm. anha, he walked past some companions, and the Prophet said, Inna hath Safiya. Mm. This is my wife, Safiya. In case the companions thought, that perhaps the Prophet ﷺ was with another woman, which mm. they didn't at all. And they affirmed. To be clear. And the Prophet said, I'm clarifying it. Why? Mm. The shaitan, he goes through the, the, the veins of the children of Adam, the way the blood flows through the veins. Mm. So from this, the scholars, such as Ibn Taqiq al Eid, they said the ones who have to be the furthest away from places of suspicion is the people of da'wah and the people of ilm. Yes, so Allah. if someone suspects a person of ilm, then it's upon that person to clarify. Mm. There are some people, Shaykh, they do not like to clarify. Hmm. They like the ambiguity around them hmm. And unfortunately there are many Sometimes we hear them say words That make us feel like they're Salafi hmm. But then they have actions And positions that they take Which are not in line with The positions of the Salaf al-Salih hmm. And of Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah And this is not something that They want is, their cake and eat it too They want their cake and they want to eat it too Play Exactly, both sides, huh? exactly. Hmm. Sheikh, we're going to clarify this Not because we're trying to please anyone hmm. Allah wa Rasulu, ahaq wa iyardu. Allah and His Messenger, Allah some of the ones who are most deserving of being pleased. So the expectation here is not for anyone, uh, anyone's minds to be changed mm. or to make anyone happy. It's just to be clear, so that those who have a sincere heart mm. and that want to take benefit will be able to. But those who are part of cults mm. and hizbs and groups and occults associations. If Allah Azza wa has sealed that person's heart, then what can we do? What can we do? So inshallah ta'ala, the discussion is going to be brief, <coughs> but hopefully we're going to cover many key fundamental principles of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. What a lot of people don't realize is that there's a difference between the foundations, the usul hmm. of Ahl Sunnah, hmm. and the things which are subsidiary, secondary issues. Hmm. Sometimes people differ 
over se- secondary issues, but that's an acceptable scope amongst mm-hmm. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We're talking about the issues that are agreed upon, which there is no possible room for disputation. Mm-hmm. And some of the Imams, they mention that there are about 313 odd usul of aqidah that are unanimously agreed upon. We're not going to cover all of them, but the ones that are inshallah ta'ala relevant today, inshallah. there seems to be some uh, uh, confusion around. So after today, as Allah Azza wa said in the Quran, لِيَهْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ عَنْ بَيِّنَا وَيَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّا عَنْ بَيِّنَا After today, the one who's going to live yeah, is going to live clarity. with delil and mm. evidence. And the one who's going to perish is going to perish with evidence. Khalas. We're going to make it clear, inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Shaykh, first and foremost, the most important question, which is a question about tawheed. Mm. Shaykh, what do you understand to be tawheed? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala khatim al-anbiya ashraf al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in Before I even answer that question, I want to say something Please The criticism of the criticizers is nothing to me It's like flies buzzing Wallahi, my concern is always with what Allah thinks of me How I'm pleasing Allah, how is my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my concern is always that I do my best to live in accordance with the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the way of the Salaf al-Ummah. People will never be pleased. People due to hasad, due to jealousy, accused people like Imam al-Bukhari like you mentioned in your Muqaddimah. So for us, this clarification first and foremost is only because mashallah, you came to me with good akhlaq and you mentioned the way of the Salaf so I agreed to it. Alhamdulillah, after that I will clarify. I believe in Tawheed as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear in the Quran about his asma wa sifat. I believe in them as Allah has said them, as the Mustafa alayhi salatu salam has mentioned them in his what is authentically established without ta'wil, without tashbih, without distortion, without giving any meanings, without likening it to the creation. I believe in Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. I believe in Tawheed al-Rabubiyyah. I believe in all that is in the Quran. I believe in all that has been established on the lisan of Mustafa alayhi salatu salam. And I'm explicitly clear about my aqidah. And I have taught aqidah. And I have, in, even in da'wah videos against non-Muslims, I have clarified that I believe in following the athar. I do not believe in the way of the Asha'ira. I do not believe in the way of the Maturudiya. I do not believe in the way of the Mu'tazila or the Jahmiya or any of these sects. Rather, I stick to the Athar. I believe in the Aqidah that is clear from the evidence from the Quran and Sahih Ahadith as the Salaf of this Ummah understood it. I have been explicit. And those who want to take terms and twist them this is the disease in their hearts. Rather, even if you watch our videos that our kuffar ask these questions regarding the rafida, regarding sects, I have always made my stance clear without concern from any of those groups criticizing. I have criticized contemporary groups like al Ikhwan continuously. And for somebody to make such an accusation is laughable. Ajeeb. To try to attribute to me something that I have so explicitly condemned. When you say Ikhwan Shaykh, you mean the Ikhwan Muslimin. Ikhwan al Muslimin, the group, the sect, the, the ideology that has come from it. I have clearly and openly criticized those who follow the Ashari Aqidah. And, and this is in my Aqidah Durus, where I went over this in detail. Those that follow the Maturudi Aqidah. We don't find these aqaid to be there in the time of the salaf of this ummah. So how could we say that somebody later explained aqidah or understood it better than the sahaba, those that were salaf? So we, inshallah, are upon the way of the salafiyya, the way of those who follow the sahaba, who follow the great a'imma and ulama, the ruus of this ummah, the jama'ah, the asas. This is explicit for me, and today I will make it even clearer. So for those who want to be clear, they should know what I'm upon. Barakallah fi Sheikh. I feel like there's no point in me even asking anything. Keep going. Literally. It's okay. Let's clear it up. I will, I will even say one more thing. Tafadl. I have clarified before and I will clarify again. I have no intent, no desire to work with the people of Bid'ah. 
Barakallah. with the people of Hawa, the people of desires, with modernists, with Ikhwanis, with any other sect that wants to take away from the way of the Jama'ah, I have no desire. We have been contacted by major organizations that not, not even from this country or that country, international uh, yani organizations that their budgets are impossible to understand by, by laymen like me. People who would get you into government offices in the White House. And we rejected this. Why? Because I'm not interested in getting funding. I'm not interested in popularity. I'm interested in growing the da'wah. Al-Kitabi was sunnah and the way of the Salaf al-Ummah. Explicit. Well, I Sheikh, I feel shy to even ask you. Please, anything. go ahead. Well, it's for Sheikh. the benefit of those who see. Sheikh, anything we I ask now is just going to be, it's just going to be ta'kid. It's just going to be Fattah. emphasis on what you've already said. Sheikh, you mentioned the Maturidiyah, the Jahmiyyah, these groups. You mentioned the Ikhwan al-Muslim from the contemporary groups. Sheikh, also, although the Ikhwan al-Muslim they are Khawarij, or they have beliefs for the Khawarij, the Khawarij, Sheikh, what is your position on the Khawarij? I have made this clear before, and I will make it clear again. I am not murjah. I do not believe in irja. I reject it. I condemn it. I am not a khariji. I condemn the khawarij, those that make takfir on Muslims, those that make takfir on either a'immat al-Muslimin or a'amatihim, without adilla, without the shari'i evidences that have to be there, those that do this, make the blood of the Muslims halal, those that make takfir, hatta even on those kings and things that they do not have this right to do, I condemn this. And I've always condemned this. And if somebody falls in that mistake, if somebody falls in that mistake, I distance myself from them. Right? Having said that, many uh, imma and ulema of the past, for example, Imam al nawawi or Ibn Hajar, they made mistakes in Tawilat. And if we mention their names in Durus and Halaqat, it does not mean that we accredit those mistakes. Exactly. And this is why myself, when I taught Bulugh, for example, or when I taught Nukhba, I clarified my criticism of Ibn Hajar Asqalani's mistakes. But at the same time, obviously we have to accredit the greatness of his work, of such course. as, and as a Sheikh and Abdul Thaymeen and other A'imma and Ulema have done. So if I mention the name of a scholar, does not mean that I agree with everything he's ever done or written. Right? And my criticism and distancing myself from those mistakes is well documented for those who want to find the truth. Many a people, they just want to cause fitin. So they will take an hour and a half long dars, they'll try to clip one clip from it without looking at the context. Of course. They will even translate that sometimes without translating the rest. Why? Because there's mard, there, there, there are the disease, fi him in their hearts. Mm -hmm. But alhamdulillah, today this will be the dawa, mm -hmm. this will be the medicine for mm -hmm. it. Inshallah. With regards to the Ikhwan and Muslimin, they branch off into many of the, you know, Qutbis, mm -hmm. Sururis, so on and so forth. What is your position on them? Regarding all of them and any of them, if they are not on the way of the Salaf of this Ummah, if they leave this to make themselves into any kind of hizb, any kind of cult, any kind of sect, where they get into the Aqeedah that is Khalif or a Manhaj that is Khalif to that of the Salaf of this Ummah, I reject them. Barakallah fiqh. Sheikh, you've mentioned extensively on this trip. I've heard you mention it in almost every sitting that we've had, and we've had multiple in these three days. What is your position on ilmul kalam and philosophy and giving da'wah through this? Alhamdulillah, as I have, ex even in the debate that we had with uh, David Wood, you know, when he came with Anthony the crook and Sam, the whatever he is, and they tried to bring up a way to debate through kalam, even if it would have been beneficial for the debate and to win the debate, I rejected it. I told them very explicitly, even in front of kuffar, there's not something that I'm only saying because I'm in front of da'wah man. What I said in those videos is I reject this methodology for da'wah. My da'wah is based on the Qur'an and the Sahih Ahadith mm. in the way that the da'wah was used by the earlier a'imma and ulema. And I myself, when I have doubts in how to approach, I reach out to the scholars that I know that are upon the Qur'an and Sunnah and I've studied with. And I ask for those advice. 
on how to approach. And the approach that I have taken is to totally and completely reject kalam in, in understanding aqeedah or in da'wah or any of those fields. Barakallahu feek, Sheikh. So if you've rejected ilm al-kalam, which is philosophy, mm. um, and we're here specifically talking about philosophy in regards to the ilahiyat mm. uh, and issues of creed, um, then does that mean that you reject also the intellect? Tayyib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised those that use their aql, their uqul. Right? So we believe that the intellect is used, but how is it used and how should it be used? It should be used to ponder and think and use the adilla from the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. The intellect should be used to understand and explain the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ that are authentically established from a hadith of Sahihah. That use of the intelligence of the human body, we have no problem with. Alhamdulillah. But those who say, aql ala al we reject this. Those who say that their intelligence over the obedience to the clear adilla, the evidences, we reject that. We say, naql ala al aql mm -hmm. We say that what is in the evidences, we accept over anybody's intelligence. Mm -hmm. Shukran, ya Shaykh. Ayyakum. Shaykh, earlier you mentioned that you're against khuruj and you're against takfir. Some people may ask, does that mean that you work for a government or that you have perhaps an association and affinity mm. to Saudi Arabia? Alhamdulillah, I don't work for any government, not Saudi Arabia, not any Khaliji government, not any other government. Alhamdulillah, and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I earn my own risk. Alhamdulillah. I don't even work for any da'wah organization. Alhamdulillah. OMF does not pay me as a salary one dollar. Alhamdulillah. My masjid does not pay me in salary one dollar. Alhamdulillah. We get not a single penny or cent from any government funding. Alhamdulillah. We don't apply for grants. We don't apply for any of that. Well, alhamdulillah, all of the brothers who are doing da'wah from our brothers in OMF or through Majd Ribat or any of our brothers that are with us, we are volunteers. We work our own jobs. We earn our own money and independently we speak the truth without the fear of anybody. Alhamdulillah. And that is why, alhamdulillah, we have no restraints on us from any government, any organization, any international. People donate money to OMF. May Allah reward them. May Allah accept it. We take that money. We buy, as we did earlier, English translation of the Quran. We bought containers mm -hmm. because every week, alhamdulillah, we were running out. We buy from it equipment to be able to record clearer videos. We pay brothers to be able to uh, do the taxes and, and edit videos and things like this. But the dua that go out, none of us get paid. Alhamdulillah. Not by any government, not by any dawah organization, not by any grants and funding. Alhamdulillah. If someone was to say, perhaps you don't get paid, but you may have been brainwashed mm. allegedly by Saudi propaganda and that's why you don't believe in khuruj and takfir. We do not base our da'wah on any one government. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the ulama of Saudi that have taught the ummah and promoted a da'wah towards tawheed. As may Allah reward the ulama of Kuwait and of other countries in the Khalij. As we ask Allah to reward those ulama of India and Pakistan and Bangladesh and Afghanistan and countries in Africa all the way from China to America, from north to south, all of those ulama, tulab ilm and du'at that stick to the haqq, we make du'a for them, we love them, we respect them. But most of my own studies have not been in Saudi Arabia. Other than sitting in some halaqat of ulama and things, if you read my background, most of my studies have not even been in Khalij or in the Gulf or in the Jazeera al-Arab. So for somebody to think that I've been influenced when most of my shuyukh are not from uh, the, the Jazeera al Arab, would be something strange. Rather, alhamdulillah, I've had the honor to study with Arab and Ajam, with from ulema from different countries, and we have put together many uh, introductions to books that I've written that explain all of that. And whatever I saw from the good that they brought from the kitab, and from the sunnah, and from the clear aqwal of sahaba, from the Salaf of this Ummah, Alhamdulillah, we accept it. Alhamdulillah. Even if one of the shuyukh makes a mistake, we love our shuyukh, but we love the haqq more. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu fi Shaykh. Hayyakum. Shaykh, you studied the classical way, which is at the feet of the scholars. Alhamdulillah. People think that you have to go to a university to be a person who's qualified with regards to Islamic studies. 
and the scholars never did, the Salaf didn't attend universities. True. They s- sat in halaqat. But with that said, have you studied in any official Islamic institution? Alhamdulillah, I have more than one. Alhamdulillah, uh, I have shared my credentials with some of the brothers. And I don't share them with everybody because there is no need for me to. Mm-hmm. But alhamdulillah, I have a master's in hadith. Alhamdulillah. On top of that, I have ijazat and asaneed from madaris as well. And whoever needs to see them has seen them. Alhamdulillah. And whoever feels that they are owed it, I don't need to show them to anybody. I have sent them to you, for example. I have sent them to some of the brothers just from the aspect of ma'rifa, so you know. On top of that, Alhamdulillah, I have books that have been published. My thesis has been published as a part of it. Alhamdulillah, I have studied both in the proper academia settings as from the Jamia al-Islamiyya in Islamabad and I've also studied with shiukh and ulama, for example, the Muhad Imam al-Bukhari and others. And I have sat with ulama in their houses alone and studied with them as a Jake Sheikh, Dr. Sadiq al-Manna and others. Alhamdulillah, those asaneed and hadith that I have, those ijazat, those tazkiyat, alhamdulillah, I have shared with the brothers that I feel like I should. On top of that, I have never claimed to be an alim. I have never even claimed except to be a beginning student of knowledge. I don't go around giving fatwa. I teach and I convey what I learned from the shiyukh that I learned from with clear evidences from the Quran and Sahih Ahadith. Alhamdulillah. We have durus online. Everything that I say from those is recorded and posted from the Sira Nabawiyah min Ahadith al Sahiha, from Fiqh Durus, from Aqidah Durus. Alhamdulillah, all of those masail we give the evidences with. Them. Alhamdulillah. So, Shaykh, you, have a, you, you mentioned many amongst you having a master's. Alhamdulillah. I also heard that you're planning to pursue further. Alhamdulillah. I won't mention, we don't want to get evil eye. But may Allah give you tawfiq. And I think that, by the way, this is something that I find perhaps and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make it so is an indicator of ikhlas when a person doesn't want to uh, showcase their qualifications. You know, uh, when I found that you had a master's, it blew me because it's something that you could have mentioned and it mm-hmm. could have been, you know, on the videos. Likewise, another person like that, Sheikh Abdurrahman Hassan. And I've never mentioned this before, but I just feel it's befitting because people criticize him for a similar thing. Also, as a person who has a master's in Islamic studies and a PhD, and he recently finished his second PhD. MashaAllah. And uh, I believe he wants to now start his third PhD with regards to secular studies. And he has not mentioned this to people, and I'm mentioning it Mm. just to show that the people who are people of khayr, who really just care about you know, spreading khair and not calling to themselves, they won't. Call, they will get these credentials. They will, but it's between them and Allah Azza wa Jal. And also, Shaykh, had it not been for the fact that you asked me not to share, I would have read out right now the tiskia that you received mm-hmm. from one of the major, major scholars of Pakistan. Who, when I read what the Shaykh said about you myself, I was blown. Mm-hmm. The way that the Shaykh described, but I respect for your request to not mention. I won't. But a question that some people have. Is are you known to the scholars? Mm. Are there any scholars that are, that know you? And they will say, if you're if you're if you're brave, then share the tazkiyat. That is not necessarily the case. Sheikh Ibn Baz Taala mentioned that you do not need a tazkiyat to teach, mm. but you have these tazkiyat, and you want to keep them f- for whatever reason. I respect that, Sheikh. But what I will mention, and I think hopefully this should be enough of an indication for people, is that and I'm not going to ask you this because I know you will <laughs> mention it, but the Sheikh is known to the scholars, <laughs> the scholars within Pakistan. And hatta even the scholars in Saudi, when the Sheikh went to Medina recently, he was uh, he met with Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Qasim, and actually Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Qasim requested to meet with the Sheikh, and they met in Masjid Al Nabwi, and they watched one of the Sheikh's videos together, which had been translated into the Arabic language. He would have never mentioned this. He would have never mentioned this. But it's the Imam of Masjid Imam Al Nabwi, the one who put the Mutun Talib in the one that we call the little yellow book and the little blue book. We call them that in the UK. It is that is it is that Sheikh who was the grandson of. Uh, Sheikh Ibn Qasim who put together the Majmu' Al-Fatawa of Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimullah Ta'ala Sheikh with that said I have another question for you since you've mentioned that you're a Salafi and you worship Allah as a Wajal alone the question is if someone asks does that mean you're a Wahhabi what would you say? I do not believe there's any such thing as a Wahhabi I think this is a made up term mm-hmm. to try to criticize the people upon Tawheed I do not follow an Aqidah that began a few hundred years ago 
I follow an aqidah that has been the aqidah since the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't believe this aqidah developed or changed as some misguided individuals have claimed. Rather, the athari aqidah has been that aqidah. Ulema, like a Shaykh Islam Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah and his student, a Shaykh Islam ibn Al-Qayyim or other imma and ulema like ibn Rajab and others, they explained many aspects of this aqidah. Ibn Abd al-Hadi and others until the time of Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad Abd al-Wahhab and others before him and after him. But this aqidah is not tied to any one individual. Right? So people who would call you a Wahhabi are just ignorant of the fact of what is the Athari aqidah, mm-hmm. what is the Salafi aqidah, what is the aqidah that is based on the way of the Sahaba and the great imma and ulama like Abu Hanifa and Malik and Shafi and Ahmad who condemned ilm al-kalam who condemned ta'wilat, and we have kutub, books written with the aqwal of those a'imma and ulema condemning it. So I don't ascribe myself to an aqidah called wahhabiyyah. Rather, I ascribe myself to follow the Qur'an and sunnah on the way of the salaf al-ummah, that my aqidah is based on the athar from the clear evidences. Shaykh, do you celebrate the birthday of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Alhamdulillah, I do not celebrate the mawlid or milad or the birthday of the Prophet sallallahu and I don't celebrate any birthdays. I believe that the celebration of Mawlid is a bid'ah, it's an innovation. And I have made multiple videos in multiple languages condemning this practice. I don't find it in the Qur'an. I do not find it established from the Prophet alayhi salatu 63 years of his life alayhi salatu if he wanted he could have celebrated it, he did not. Fasting on Mondays and Thursdays does not equate to, fa- to celebrating or throwing a party on the 12th Rabi al-Awwal. Rather, he taught us how to fast and give different reasons that are put together on thanking Allah for that. And I do believe that we should fast Mondays and Thursdays. But I do not believe that any of the A'imma, not Abu Hanifa and not Malik and not Shafi and not Ahmad, may Allah be pleased with all of them, none of them celebrated this bid'ah. And this came as an innovation in the ummah, I rejected. On top of that, as is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to sometimes give an answer more than what the questioner asked. Barakallah. Like when he was asked about the war uh, regarding al-bahr. Yes. He said about the ma, it's tuhur, but then he also increased the answer to tell them hillu may tatahu, that it's dead is halal. In that, yani following that sunnah, I will say even any celebration of birthdays is bid'ah. Barakallah. How is it a bid'ah? Because ayyad, those that are repeated celebrations are a part of the religion. Mm-hmm. When Rasulullah sallallahu went to Medina and they saw them having certain celebrations without even a religious significance mm-hmm. necessarily, he told them, Allah replaced these for you with Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And he condemned those. In fact, on top of that, not only is this an aspect of bid'ah because it has to do with the repeated celebration, it, on top of that, if we look at the asal, of this birthday celebrations. It is not something found in even the Old Testament to be something righteous. Rather in the <coughs> Old Testament, which we don't rely upon, but as a reference, that this was the practice of the people of Fir'aun, as we see in the Bible and so on. In <coughs> fact, we don't find it in the Quran, the celebration of birthdays. We don't find it in a hadith. And historic research shows that the first documented not talking about biblical documentation, but historic documentation of birthdays was from the Greek to celebrate the moon goddess. Subhanallah. This was a Greek pagan worship. Subhanallah. There is a book called An Uncommon, Uncommon Origins of Common Practices, or something like that, written by the National Geographic Society, non-Muslims, and they show that this is a historic pagan festival. How was it done? On the birthday of a person, they would have a cake uh, or a pie. Seem familiar? And they would light candles on it to show the glow of the moon. And they would blow out those candles, worshipping the moon goddess and asking for what, she, what they wanted. Today, na'udhu billah, Muslims, they take this pagan practice and they have that cake and they light those candles. And they, what do they say? Blow it out, and make, a wish. make a wish. This is following the ibadah of pagans. So I condemn not just the mawlid, but the practice of birthdays altogether. Barakallah, Sheikh. So then, Sheikh, 
one, if they say, if you do not celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, does that mean you are a Ghustaki Rasul? You do not love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We believe that the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is with Tiba' and Nabi Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's with the obedience of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the sending Salat ala Nabi, by sending Allahumma Salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin, as we see yani, to the end of it, repeatedly and all the time. And I, with my own shortcomings, I do my best to follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I do my best to send salat ala nabi, and I do my best to love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with actions and how I live, and I do my best to learn and teach the sirah nabawiyah, the life of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam from the authentic sources. I do my best to preserve what is authentic from what is incorrectly and weakly and fabricatedly attributed to the Prophet ﷺ. And this is from my love for Habibuna wa Nabiyuna Muhammad ﷺ. Innovating in the religion is not love for Rasulullah ﷺ. Because our Prophet ﷺ, he forbid the bid'ah. He told us every innovation is a misguidance. And every misguidance, finnar. It will end you in the hellfire. So, if somebody loves Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi they need to obey Rasulullah sallallahu not innovate in this religion. Barakallahu Sheikh. Sheikh, question I have you mentioned earlier that you do not um, believe in working and uniting with the people of Bid'ah. Mm. Some will ask, was there a particular reason as to why you had a discussion with a person that was from an aqidah? And I'm only not mentioning specifically just because if the person is not a person of Sunnah, we don't want to promote that person. Agreed. So I will intentionally not mention the person, but sure. a person from the subcontinent who is with a particular inclination. A very popular speaker, yes. Popular speaker. You had a discussion with him. Yes. What was that about, Sheikh? Of course. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained upon us to call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? to call people towards Tawheed and to be means of them coming towards Tawheed. Mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained us to forbid that which is wrong. Nahi an al-munkar. This particular individual and anybody who cared enough to have known would have known but some people they don't want to know what's right mm-hmm. they just want to cause fitin. Mm-hmm. They would have known that my interaction with this individual began not with any praise, not with any love, not with any cooperation. Rather, I heard a mas'ala from him where he made a tuhma against the salaf. Where he claimed a certain things that was academically wrong. Mm-hmm. And I can explain the mas'ala and the video is up for whoever wants to see it. Where he spoke about a mas'ala about the second jama'ah, making a second jama'ah in the masjid. And he made a claim that in all of the time of the Salaf, and he called it Aslaf. He said in all of the time of Aslaf, it was only done once. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked the Sahabi to give Sadaqah by praying with somebody again. And he said it was never done other than that. And I saw this to be an academic mistake. And I saw this to be a, a, a insult to the Salaf. Because the fact is that Salaf prayed many a times in second Jama'at and authentically established a hadith. I am not one to look for views by making rudud, by making uh, any videos to try to refute people. I'm not one to try to gain popularity that way. Rather, my niya is to ho- make islah of the person, to mm-hmm. make a correction. Sometimes that requires making a video. Mm-hmm. But I always try my best because of the hadith about nasiha, to be a well-wisher, to hope to do it first privately. This is my own methodology. This is what our shiuch have taught us to do because sometimes when you attack somebody, they will not listen to you. But if you provide them that opportunity to make a correction, people may not know you were the means, but if they correct their mistake, this is best. So I reached out to this individual in every which way I could. And this is time, the OMF videos were not popular. I was not well known. So no response came. I waited one year I emailed, I texted, I asked brothers. When no response came, due to the responsibility to stop the munkar, I made a video. And in that video, I scanned the books of hadith. And I showed adilla and evidences that his statement was incorrect. When I posted that video, that same day this person contacted us. Subhanallah. 
And I was surprised because I am a nobody. Till today I'm a nobody. But this person is very popular. He has many subscribers and many uh, very influential people that listen to Billions him in large. Of followers. Millions of followers. At first I thought this was a joke. Like I saw the comment and then it disappeared. But then this person, he, the same day he got my number from somehow. And he called me. And he apologized. And he accepted his mistake. Which I found to be something Great. fantastic. Fantastic. Because what is the point in the end is to correct the mistake. Not to just jab at people. Not to try to promote yourself by saying, ah, I'm going to make rad on this person. I'm going to... Sometimes I find it pathetic that somebody would label a video called sincere advice, but not try to reach out and give sincere advice. That's the not from a nasiha. This is a rad. This is something, a, a, they should call it a, a way to condemn. But this is nifaq because people could get a hold of me. They could talk to me. They could ask me. I may be in their city right now. 15, they may have my numbers. Just 15 minutes away, Sheikh. 15 minutes away. So how is that a sincere advice? It's not. So from the bab of nasiha, even for the people of bid'ah, we want to bring them to the sunnah. We don't just want to fry them on a, on a video. So from that, I appreciated the fact that he corrected. He made rujua. He, he turned back and he made a video claiming that look he was right there are adillah i was wrong seeing an opportunity i spoke to him and privately i gave him nasiha on many other masail including mistakes and aqaid including obviously i can't do all of that in one shot somebody with that many mistakes during that time i was asked on a podcast about this individual and i made clear that he has mistakes in aqidah and fiqh People could watch those videos, but they don't want to watch those videos. They just want to make fitin. The same individual, I made clear my stance on him. From that time, for many months, many of the people around this person, and this is something between us, but I'm sharing. Many of those people, because of the adilla I sent, and because I presented them with good akhlaq, many of them left that aqidah, and came, alhamdulillah, to the right aqidah. Alhamdulillah. And uh, I can give you evidences of that. That they started channels for me, even without me asking. Even without my permission. And they took our videos for the right aqidah, and they put them up. And they removed the videos those? those? brothers used to run another channel. And, and I don't want to get too explicit, but I've given you yes. the names. You know. Yes. In that channel, khalas, I'll even give the name. Spread knowledge. In this channel, they had videos of some deviant people. right? Many deviant people. Because with good akhlaq, privately, I approached them. Alhamdulillah, they took those individuals off. One by one. Not all, all the time, take all of them off. No. This one person you put, this is wrong. Here's why he's wrong. Here's evidence is what he said. They took that. Here's this other person. Slowly, slowly, they took those off. Tayyip, because of that positive change, with good akhlaq, I continue to send them. Now this is something I don't advertise. Why? Because I'm not doing it for show. I'm doing it to bring a chain, taghayyar. When you see a munkar, taghayyara. I need to change it. At that time, during these discussions, I was invited to be interviewed on a live show. As to me, it's an invitation as if, if CNN or Fox or any other live broadcasting invites me. Mm -hmm. right? And he invited you to his platform. His platform. Not that you invited him to your platform. Never invited him to our platform. So he invited you to his platform, his platform. to speak to his people who may have never even heard Da'wah Tawheed was Sunnah ever before. Before accepting this, I reached out to one of my teachers. And I explained the situation. And I explained who the person was. And my teacher gave me a nasiha. He said, look, when you reach out to people like this, you are not just speaking to them. You're speaking to the millions who subscribe and watch those. And this interview was not just going to be on his channel, on many other channels, including local broadcasts in that country would play this in Ramadan. So it gave us an opportunity to call towards Quran with Sunnah. And here, when somebody invites you and gives you that opportunity, and you have already clarified, I had already clarified my 
my condemnation of the mistakes of his aqidah and the mistakes in fiqh and I had made videos where he made ruju from his own mistakes that he had and in many other issues that were not published in videos he had made ruju privately with me on issues of aqaid and many of the things about the aqidah athariyah that I was sharing understanding that with the advice of my teacher I went on the show and I spoke good of what he had done from good mm -hmm. looking at the great imma of Jarwa Ta'adil like Imam Al-Dhahabi and others this is not to praise him but rather to recognize what would be the benefit for example people making tawbah which is true many a young people that I know have made tawbah from watching his videos at the same time in that hour something or hour and a half interview I clearly called towards the Quran towards the Sunnah to the way of the Salaf al-Ummah repeatedly giving that message as a advice to him and to his viewers people of Hawa people of desires they cut all that out they snipped just my intro uh, appreciation for the good now maybe this was a mistake at the time I consulted my teachers I saw the benefit in it till today many people from my own family that wouldn't listen to my durus they saw that interview and it affected them to come towards the Quran and Sunnah Alhamdulillah. and they told me about people in that country who regularly would not listen to Salafiyah who would never watch durus of Salafiyah who never listened to the Athari Aqidah when they heard that interview and they heard the call the statement towards the Quran and Sunnah they changed Alhamdulillah with all of that, maybe I was mistaken. Maybe this was a mistake. Tayyib, if I make a ishtihadi mistake, does this mean I'm a person of bid'ah? No. Does this mean that you should make videos when you could ask me or talk to me? Does this mean you should not even watch the full interview? Take clips from it? What's the benefit in that? If anything, it shows a person's ignorance. Mm. Because the scholars, they say, la in fi masa'il ijtihad. Mm. There's no rebuking a person when, he, when it comes to issues of ijtihad, meaning things for which there's not a textual evidence there's no ayah or hadith that you're going to find to say Sheikh Uthman do not sit with so and so mufti mm. in the absence of that you have to use independent reasoning in with regards to the principles of the text mm. as best as you can and sometimes you get it right sometimes you get, get it, wrong. it wrong like the yeah. sahaba who when the prophet told them to pray not pray asr till they reach Banu Quraiba mm. and some of them understood it as Literally, do not pray until you reach Banu Quraiba, even if you go outside and past the time of Asr. And others mm -hmm. saw it as no, do not miss Asr. But it was an encouragement to get into Banu Quraiba first. So they prayed outside of Banu Quraiba. When they both came and brought it back to the Prophet, ﷺ, he didn't rebuke either because they were both using textual evidences but understanding them in different ways. So you brought the hadith, Man ra'a minkum munkaran fil bi yadihi. Mm -hmm. and other. Uh, evidences and qawaid and you consult the scholars and based on that you saw it as this is the ijtihad that we're going to employ here and we're going to sit with this particular person only an absolutely stupid ignorant person who does not know his right to his left hand in the religion would see that as a situation to make a big issue out especially in the context of a person according to the Quran and Sunnah in fact I would question whether that person even knows how to wash his bum when he goes to use the toilet Mashallah. because this is the sim simple parts of the deen yes, they claim salafi on the top of their tongue mm -hmm. people do not as in if you, if you make tabdi of a person or you do tahadir of a person you warn against a person on Issues that are not issues of a soul that is in within itself a bid'ah. And what I there's a kalam of Shaykh Al Ibn Baz, which I wish I had it to hand right now, where it's so beautiful. He mentioned Ibn Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala, the Mufti of Saudi Arabia, and who was, you know, Al -walid. Our fa exactly our father with regards to da'wah to Salafiyyah and so many of the things that we benefit today. He mentions clearly, and I'll summarize this kalam that if a person is a person of the Sunnah and he makes a mistake, he said, do not warn against that person. He said, do not make the people run away from him. If anything, speak to him privately. Advise him, advise him, advise him. But do not warn against him. And do not forget the good. Do not forget the good. That is how you deal with a person who is a person that is on the sunnah. In fact, it will bring in the clip. I, there's a video of me reading the kalam of the sheikh completely. We'll put it in there. And that's Ibn Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala. So... The fact of the matter is that these people who don't know how to differentiate between these things mm. are absolute 
fools wallahi yeah. and the other thing i want to mention is that when you are sitting on your back seat okay struggling with your own fitting mm. of pornography mm. and masturbation and struggling to lower your gaze and you go and you sit and you watch dramas you've got lihya your claim you came to be a man of the sunnah and whatnot and so on and so forth and you struggling to watch tv and probably watching movies but and you're not involved in da'wah but when a person who's doing the da'wah makes a mistake or an alleged mistake and it spreads around in whatsapp groups you're one of the first to get involved in the action and mm. share your two cents and he sit back down mm. because you don't know what it's like to be in the middle and the thick mm. of it all of you don't know what it's like it's things are different on the ground mm. you're being hit with things from here you're hearing things from there you're dealing with this situation the variables are changing and you have to adapt islam is a pragmatic <coughs> religion mm. so sometimes you will sit with a person of bid'ah mm. for a maslaha mm. like Sheikh Rabi yeah. who was for a very long time he spent a lot of time with the ikhwan and muslimin mm. was that because he was an ikhwani? no was that because Sheikh Rabi was an ikhwani? no no his mas- the maslaha that he saw mm. was that I'm going to try and change them from the inside which later on the Sheikh realized these people are not to be changed mm. so what? he abandoned them he of refuted course. them barakallahu fee. fee. we but also have the famous uh, any speech that I listened to and benefited from mm-hmm. when he went to a Sufi masjid yes. in, in Sudan. Sudan and people can listen to that audio and he clarifies that this is a Sufi platform yeah. the thing that surprises me and disgusts me in a way <coughs> some of these people they are not involved in da'wah they are not involved in making rad of such a widespread bid'ah that we see. In fact, some of these people would share a platform, meaning they would go to a masjid where somebody like Farrakhan had just spoken. Subhanallah. And then they have the audacity to come and make videos about me. Subhanallah. I don't... Farrakhan is a kafir. Farrakhan is a kafir. <laughs> and this person was warned about this. And he still did it. He was, uh, we're to, I, I believe we're talking about Rumi San. I'd rather not mention the name. Okay, we can bleep that out. But I will say this. If I wanted, I could circulate the warnings of ulama of this ummah against this person, mm. including Sheikh Rabia and others. But I'm not one to try to pause or pursue fitna. Rather, I'd rather make dua for this person. Mm-hmm. If I have the opportunity, I'd rather reach out personally to this person and give nasiha to this person. But it's just funny how people who themselves have been warned against explicitly by scholars like Sheikh Rabia were out there promoting this yani, so-called nasiha. Yani. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> rather, this is hypocrisy. Now, for us, we're not worried about what people think. And those viewers out there that see the good we're doing, that see the explicitly clear statements of our aqaid without fear of any organization or trying to play with any other side, who see the fruits of those thousands of people that have entered Islam, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. as a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I as a witness, Shaykh, how many people we have, we've had since the two days you've been here? Four, four people sh- have four, taken four shahadas. And one of them came to the masjid saying, I've come because I watch your videos and he wanted you to take shahada. And how many reverts? In fact, I was shocked. The brother, Mikael, who's a revert in our masjid, he said he watched your videos. And how many reverts have you met? That brother, Pat, who was there the other day, he said it was your videos that brought me to Islam. And the people are jealous because people are coming to that Salafia through other than them. Yes. You should, you should be happy that people are coming to Salafia. No. But because it's not through their hizb, perhaps they're a bit upset about that. Jealousy, Allah, this hasad is a very bad disease. Many times a person may have good in them. And I hope and make dua for these brothers. Amen. But the jealousy makes them do things that expose their ignorance to the world. When we study kutub of takhrij, of hadith, we mention the names like Al-Bayhaqi. Mm-hmm. Right? Which one of us hasn't mentioned Al-Bayhaqi 
when referencing hadith, whether it's from uh, Sunan al-Kabir or when you're talking about Shu'b al-Iman or any of those great books that he wrote. Now you know, as a talib ilm, al-Bayhaqi had issues in aqaid, Ta'weel. some ta'wilat, some uh, yani beliefs about the anbiya and their hayat, major things. So if I mention that many great works have been put together like uh, Sunan al-Kabir for al-Bayhaqi, does that mean that I'm calling people towards al-Bayhaqi? If I mention that the most reliable sharh that is used uh, can, amongst the ulema is the sharh Sahih Muslim of Nabawi or in Shafi'i Fiqh, one of the, the standard books to be studied is the, is the work of Imam Shafi'i, Imam al Nabawi. And the Majmu'ah of al Nabawi is one of the most expansive works in the Shafi'i Fiqh. Does that mean I agree with the Tawilat that he has done? No, not at all. These people. When I mention, for example, a, a scholar, just mention the name of them. They assume that I agree with everything that he said, that I'm calling towards him. La. I have made clear in videos that many people who may be skilled in one skill of uloom of sharia mm. will have mistakes in others. People who do takhreej of hadith, Many times I read their works, I don't know them personally. I don't follow them. I don't sit with them. I don't call towards them. But when I say that this person has done a, a, a takhreej of this book of hadith, or he does takhreej of hadith wrote a good as book, yeah. others. <laughs> huh? if, yeah, a person wrote a good book. A good book. They assume this means that khalas, you are supporting them and praising them and calling towards them. Ignorance. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, in his Kitab al ilm when he was talking about the different tafasir, he mentioned about Balagha as a makhshari. It's a makhshari's mu'tazili. But of course, Al Kashaf is a well known book in Balagha. It doesn't mean that Shaykh Ibn Athaymeen is praising and calling towards uh, the makhshari, the mu'tazili. He's just saying that he did this work in Balagha and it's a good work in that subject. So this is their double sidedness. This is their double standard. And rather for us, Shaykh, this insaf. Mm. Like if I, this is insaf is just to be just, like Imam Dhabi rahimahullah taala, when he talked about Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, and Hajjaj, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf is a man who spilled the blood of two companions, mm. and it's estimated 120,000 people he killed, and he was a man who said that when I die and you take my janazah, destroy the houses on the way. Mm. It's not a man you can say a lot of khair about. Mm. But then Imam Dhabi rahimahullah taala mm. finds one or two things. To mention in his favor, nonetheless. Mm. That does that mean that he is now saying, and Hajjaj is a great man, or no. justifying him for his crimes? It's called insaf. Even in the the <coughs> kitab we were looking earlier, the kitab Mizan uh, al-Itidal by Imam al-Dhahabi, yes. which is a book he talks about the narrators that have been criticized. Mm. The 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 first harf is Hamza, yeah. so he brings Aban, Aban al Madani. And he mentions that Yahya ibn Ma'in, he said, Laysa bihi ba's. There's nothing wrong with him. Then he mentions Al Azdi. He says, Huwa Matruk. He suspe- he's, he's abandoned. You don't mm. take this narrator. He's suspected of Tashayyur. <coughs> and then what is. So, so there, is a, a great, there, there is a great Imam, Yahya ibn Ma'in, who does what? He praised him. He praised him. And there is another one who? He done jarh, he criticized mm. him. So that shows that sometimes there was praise and criticism based on what different scholars would hear of a particular person. And then Dhabi himself, he said, Qultu, and I say, there's nothing wrong with him. Mm. And his reasoning was because the one who criticized him was known to be excessive mm. and always criticizing. So when a person is mutashadid, he's always criticizing. It's very rare that he ever praises a person. His criticism is already abandoned. Mm. That's why uh, uh, another example, and this is the example that I always give. Uh, there was a man called Ibrahim ibn Abi Yahya. And Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, Thiqqatun thabt. Mm. He's trustworthy and relied upon. And then Malik says, Zindiq bin Zanadiqa. Mm. He's a heretic from the heretics. Malik is the Shaykh. Mm. Shafi'i is the Tilmid, the student, the one man. Look at the contrasting views. Mm. One says he's a heretic, he's a kafir. The other one says he's from the most reliable of reliable people. Of course. Did anyone say Shafi'i, he defends the heretics? No. Did anyone say Malik is Mutasahir, he's an Ikhwani? No. Rather, they understood this is issues of ijtihad. Of Sometimes you, you're looking, you have to have insaf. This person right here, 
I see him to be a person of the sunnah So I'm going to run with it mm. You may have information or have mis- seen something That led you to believe otherwise These, mm. This is the same person Two people of the sunnah are looking at him separately They have to be just And sometimes mm. a person may have khair in him Sometimes he may have shar in him You mentioned the khair, you mentioned the shar Ibn Abi um, uh, Dhibin mm. He done takfir of Imam Malik mm. Because of what? The issue of khayar al-majlis oh. Malik never took that He said Yustatab We ask Malik to repent Otherwise his neck is struck mm. Look at that Right? Harsh, yeah. He said that he's a Dajjal min al Malik yeah. said, I didn't even know Dajjal had a plural. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is that this would happen, mm. but that doesn't mean that we throw off Malik or Ibn Abi Dhi. Ah, and, and to clarify, I did not make the adil of them. <laughs> Look, the video, if anybody actually watches it online, I was unboxing a video of a book of Sheikh Al Bani. Mm. And I mentioned, and I made a clarification video even. But so these guys don't care. They just want to bring the dirt for whatever personal issues that they have. Mm. I made a clarification even thing. Look, I have never met Abdul Aziz Tarifi. I have never met Salman Alwan. I have never studied with them. I, all I know is in books of Takhreej, their work is mentioned. They have done work on judging hadith. The video was about a book of Sheikh Albani and the point I was making is many people quote Readings of hadith And I mentioned Ahmed Shakir And Shaib Al-Nud Al-Qadr Al-Nud Nobody mentioned them <laughs> like, You know Their own issues Nobody cared about <laughs> What the point I was making is We don't blindly Accept their gradings That was the point That was the point <laughs> And they I took mean. that To be a praise And he praises them And he supports them And he Ya Allah How ignorant And foolish And blinded Do you have to be And you made a clarification And I made a clarification and that clarification was posted online by different people as well. Past that, Abu Yusak al-Huwaini. I have never met the man. I have never sat in his dars. I have never told anybody go and seek knowledge from him. But he did a takhreej of, uh, يعني the beginning of Ibn Kathir. Yeah. And as the imma and ulama have said that this uh, print Dar Ibn Hazm with the takhreej Ibn Jawzi, Dar Ibn Jawzi. This is one of the best prints. Many scholars have praised Many it. Many scholars have praised it. I think that is the most praised out of the new publications. No doubt. Taba Thania, get no. the second print. The first one had some yes. errors. But this print, I was talking about that, and people took this to be, oh, he's praising. Ajib. Look, if you think Abu Isaq al Huwaini has not done takhreej of hadith, you're an idiot. You just don't know what you're talking about. Al Bani. <laughs> Sheikh Albani, yes. Used to go to him and he, Abu Isaac al Huwaini used to go to him. Now, his issues of takfir, his issues of uh, in aqaid, I am not talking about them, I'm not praising them, I'm not calling towards them. But the fact that the man checks hadith, how can you deny that? The fact that Abu Dhabi Tarifi or Salman Alwan check hadith, how can you deny that? And you're not even, you're not even saying go check the checking. You're just I'm not saying, saying you're just my discussion. point was don't blindly accept their ratings <laughs> yeah Allah I mean Ajib I hope Allah. you guys clip that short and put it in this because the stupidity and the blindness and the hatred and the hasad of these people surprised me Ajib. I'm saying don't blindly accept it and you're saying you're praising them Ajib. look maybe some of these people are just academically lacking people from the past and present have worked on uloom such as takhreej al-hadith, tafsir, for example, al-Qurtabi. Who can deny that he was a mufassir of the Qur'an? No one. But how many aqaid did he make mistakes in? He's many. He's got a shah. Right? So if I say famous tafsir like Jamil al-Ahkam al-Qur'an of Qurtabi, does that mean I'm telling you accept from his mistakes of aqaid? Never. Look, I made a clarification. On this issue But they didn't care Why? Because some people is the disease But Today Why am I sitting here? I don't even care what they think I am sitting here For your sake Because I saw you To have good akhlaq When you approached me And you mentioned the salaf And for the sake of our viewers So their hearts can be at, at ease That's what it's for And I know those people Who support our da'wah Are not worried about these things Alhamdulillah But I don't want shak in their hearts Alhamdulillah Walai Sheikh I have nothing else to say 
I, I, my, my goal when I started this, as I said, Liahlika man halaka an bayina. Subhanallah. Wa yahya man hayya an bayina. The one who's going to perish, let him perish with clarity. If you do not take and understand this and accept this from today, mm-hmm. you perish with clarity. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to live and you're going to support the da'wah and you're going to benefit from it, you can support and live and benefit <laughs> with clarity, inshallah ta'ala. Allah Shaykh, la uzaki ma Allahi ahada. I don't praise anyone before Allah Azza wa Jal. Only Allah knows the affairs of the hearts. The brothers know me. I do not like to work with people. I'm very conscious, careful of the people that I work with. And Shaykh, you've mentioned these clarifications of things which I've not even seen. And these topics came out after you landed. But from the things that I'd seen on your videos, I only saw Salafiyya. I only saw Salafiyya. And if a person can't see that, and I'm a person who I like to consider myself to be cautious and extra critical, because I've worked with people in the past where we've brought and praised people in the past who we thought were Salafi and we hoped good for, but then they done a U-turn or maybe if I even if we can't say U-turn, at least they took turn, a left turn. Took a left turn. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the believer doesn't get bitten by the say hole twice. Mm, exactly. So it was from that angle. But Sheikh, it was clear to me. And coming on this trip, just seeing every every uh Every every lesson, every majlis, all I've seen from you is Quran, and Sunnah, and Tawheed. Shaykh Barakallahu Feek. Hayyakum Allah. Mujazakallahu Khair. Ask Allah to protect you from the shayateen al ins, the shayateen al jinn, the jealousy of the, 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 the hasideen. And as for those who are people who are not going to listen and who are going to be jealous and who are going to be angry at the khair, whether you're an ikhwani, whether you're a dirty ikhwani or filthy. Kharji dog, or whether you're a Hizbi who claims to be a Salafi, mm. we say to you, die with your rage. Mm. Die with your rage. I want to also mention something before we end. One, to be explicitly clear again, I have no interest in working with the people of Bid'ah, or Ikhwanis, or Tablighis, or Sufis, or any of those sects. And if I go to a place, to call people towards Allah and if it's a place where there are people of that standing it will be for da'wah and it will be with the nasiha and the, the, the advice of scholars and brothers in du'at I want to be explicitly clear about my aqidah and I have no shyness in this and I don't need anybody's accreditation in this I am upon the kitab, sunnah and the way of the salaf al-ummah Alhamdulillah. I want to be clear that I condemn bid'ah and I condemn khuruj and the khawarij and I condemn the murji' and their irja and I condemn the jahmiya and the asha'ira and maturudiya and anybody who leaves the way of the salaf. I want to be explicit that your sitting with me does not mean you agree with everything I've said and everything I've done. And, and if I make a mistake, so. if I make a mistake, I want to tell people Imran is free from my mistakes. That's my mistake. Right? I want to be clear that I'm a human being who's doing his best to stick to the way of the Quran and Sunnah and I may make mistakes and I ask Allah for forgiveness for my mistakes and I hope that Allah will accept the good that I do and forgive me for my mistakes but I have never intentionally gone towards selling out a letter, a harf, a hukam from the Sharia for anything from popularity and may Allah protect you from ever doing so sometimes you will go to a country you don't know and you meet somebody you don't know and they're a parent on the Quran and Sunnah and they come and you clarify to them are you on the Quran and Sunnah? Are you on the way of the Salaf? And they say yes. And maybe they have mistakes that I don't know about. I know that Allah will not hold me accountable for that because I did my best. And those that have this jealousy in their heart I ask Allah to cure them. I make dua for them. Wallahi, I want good for them. I didn't go and make videos to refute them by name. I didn't go and say points. I didn't release videos of ulema making yani, clear jarh on them, clear condemnations on them. Why? I want good for them. So I hope if they watch this, that Allah makes it that their hearts get cleansed. Ameen. And Allah makes it that they want khair for the ummah. Ameen. And they come out and do the work that needs to be done by calling towards tawheed. And they get up and go and try to make a change against bid'ah in the world. Not just sit in your little circle trying to impress your few friends. 
Not thinking that Salafi is tied to just you. Not thinking that they have some stamp to approve and disregard. It is amazing to me that some people who went on such platforms with people that I rejected because of their use of kalam, because of their inclination towards homosexuality and back and forth and this and that, because of their whole thesis being on a, a use of theology based on kalam. And when their friends and acquaintances would go, there is no condemnation of that. Yeah. When they themselves share a platform that was used by a clear kafir, deviant, somebody who calls towards kufr clearly like Farrakhan. When people like this who had the ability to clarify issues and give nasiha and change only wanted to use it with the fakeness of fake of nasiha and with it in putting it poison, I know that they have a disease. And I know that disease grows in their heart. And I ask Allah to cure me and them. Amen. And I ask Allah to protect me and them. Amen. And I ask Allah to put me and them on the way of the Quran and the Sunnah Amen. and the way of the Salaf al-Ummah. Amen, Ya Rabbi. And I want to thank you. I have seen nothing but good from you. Since I've been here, whatever the past and mistakes that may have been there, when I have seen you here, you have come to me with good akhlaq. You have come and shown me an environment of people dedicated to knowledge and following the right way. And I ask Allah to forgive you for your Amin. mistakes and forgive me for my mistakes. Amin. And I ask Allah to put you and me and everybody who's watching upon the way of the Quran and Sunnah Amin. and the way of the Salaf al-Ummah and the way of Islah and the way where the qalb, the heart will come out as qalbun salim. Amin, Ya Rab. I love you for the sake of Allah, Shaykh. Barakallah fi. May Allah love you as you love me for his sake. Amin. And I love you for the sake of Allah as well. Amin. With that said, سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I don't think you can get more explicit than that.